Okay, guys, we got another Excel model this week, and it's my business valuation estimator for smarthelping.com. Uh, so, now keep in mind, I am not a certified valuation expert or uh, analyst. I have no financial certificates. Um, I simply have an accounting degree and a lot of um, Excel expertise so what I've done is created a simple thing and uh, it allows you to put from three to five years worth of your uh, business data in here and for valuation purposes let me make this black we always start with the net income you simply put that in for each year and your net income obviously is going to be on your income statement and as you can see here if we only wanted to do three years it would come up ah uh, shoot these are supposed to be orange this equals three okay I can't see with this because I changed my uh, formatting around and didn't check if it changed my if uh, changed my other formats okay there we go so you can see if we put in three years everything goes away you simply put in your start year here let's say you wanted to do start at 2012 sorry you gotta actually put a date in here so let's say 1 1 2012 that's not a date there we go 12 12 13 and 14 um, you get your cap net income and then we simply add back uh, a few items we're adding back your income tax that you uh, your provision for income tax for federal and state annual depreciation amortization and any other irregular expenses and this is so we can get to a better annual cash flow figure now why do they add back in income tax because it is a cash flow out I don't know I think it's fair to actually remove that because that is an amount that's going out but it's kind of generally accepted that you know EBITDA it's very common so we're just doing it that way so then you get a number here which basically is your net income plus all these items now if you don't have any depreciation or amortization or irregular expenses then you wouldn't put anything here because they didn't go into reducing your net income so you don't need to add it back uh... let's say if we did have say five thousand dollars of depreciation that's going to increase our EBITDA as you can see don't want that to change the format see no effect if it's year three if we put in year five here it would show up okay so then we get to the next part of this which I built in a weighting of the annual EBITDA the weight allows you to assign different values and this could be based on all kinds of different things but you can make certain values more important if you think it's closer to what what the business will do in the future that's kinda of what the normalized EBITDA is so let's put in five here so if we think this forty thousand you can see how it's kinda of going up if we think the forty thousand is actually has more weight we'll choose our scale here we'll put that up to five and put this up to five as well and you can see the values in weight one and two are going up 
you can see now it's at 155 and 133 before it was at 131 and 154 just by changing that weight of the last uh, cash annual cash flow um, also you got your EBITDA multiple which you can apply two different ways here normally all this and this is another very subjective part so the EBITDA multiple is telling you how many years of cash flow are you gonna pay so this is saying well you're making thirty eight thousand dollars in cash flow a year if we give it a five EBITDA multiple we'll give you a hundred ninety thousand dollars today for that cash flow and this is you know it's it's tough to find I mean you could do comparables of what other similar businesses have had for a multiple um, it's very subjective but it's basically you know if you had like a two here and you were the business you'd be like well why don't I just hold the business for two more years and I'll just make that much or might make more or less and that's the same with the with the person who's or or business that's acquiring you is thinking that they you know if they can make more if they can make this EBITDA higher then they're actually getting paid back quicker than this five multiple so they'll make they're hoping to make obviously more money in five years than what they paid and then they you know or performing then obviously they can control the the business going forward into the future so, I mean, if your business is super strong and you don't want to give it up, you could do a high multiple, say 10 years, and you're saying, well, you know what, I'm, I'm saying that this thing's worth 10 years of cash flows today, not discounted. So that's what that is. And I think it's the using a, a normalized EBITDA is f pretty fair for a more mature business for a startup that's going to grow their cash flows that might not be the best thing to use but for a case of if you have historical cash flows and you feel like you've you know your 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 business is hitting certain levels consistently and you think that's what's going to happen in the future well then this is what your business is worth and based on the multiple that you feel is fair so 10 years saying it's worth 380000 Now, if somebody comes in and takes over it and turns the EBITDA into, like, 150000 annual, then, obviously, they're going to get their money back in a couple of years, and then, you know, they get to keep those cash flows going forward. Anyway, I did two weights, so you can have two different weights, weight the cash flows differently, as well as give different multiples to see what the effects are. So that's pretty diverse. And then finally, after we've gotten our enterprise value, we want to get to the equity value, which is kind of what you're going to get after everything's said and done as the seller. And obviously, you get your cash back. And this, who knows what could be stipulated in the purchase agreement. But normally, you know, you get your cash back. So you add that on top of the enterprise value. Um, any real estate you might own, you get that back unless it's also going to be sold on top of the business in which case you would add it to the enterprise value as a sale of you know real estate to that business and then also you have to reduce your debt so say you have loans and short-term long-term payables and everything else you know a business is not normally going to buy that so you just need to pay all those back same in for the real estate as well you'd pay pay those bank loans off and then any basically anything you're owing to a third party you pay that out and then that leaves you with your equity value so that's taking the enterprise value counting the effects of your assets and debt that you wash out and then there's your value then we did a nice chart here that shows weight one weight two and it shows your enterprise value versus equity value so your equity value in orange is what happens after these cash flows so right now it's actually less because these loans are high Let's say the loans were only ten thousand dollars. You can see now your equity value is going to be much higher. And 
let's just assign a similar multiple. And what are our weights are all kind of weird. Let's try to raise this. Oh, whoops. This should be a hundred thousand. Still. So there we go. Now that's more what I was looking for. So we could see the equity value is so much higher here because you're getting a lot of cash after and you're not having to pay back too much to, on loans and, and such. The enterprise value is what you're going to actually get though from just the business operation sale of what you're selling, you know, just the normal operations of your business for. Um, so I think this it's a basically a, a pretty basic model, but it, it still has some stuff with the weighting and the multiples and the cash and stuff to give you a, a, a more specific idea of what you might expect in the sale of the business. Um, but it is simple enough so that you can generally apply it to just about any business. So, I'm going to put this up for sale, the template, on uh, smarthelping.com. I'll probably just go, I think a fair price for this is probably just like, you know, I'd say $49.99 is probably a fair price to pay for this. Um, I do have comments in all these boxes, so that kind of walks you through everything that everything means a little bit more specific way you can see here because I've tried to explain the different items and with the functionality to allow three to five years I can also build it if you want to use any amount of years so if you only want to take one year or two three four or five or, or whatever um, but this is for not predicting future cash flows which is actually more along what I normally do but this is for taking what cash flows you've done and then trying to put a value on it and give different weights and all that kind of stuff so that's about all I got for you the link in the description box below the YouTube video will direct you to the website where you can purchase this well my website Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you on the next uh, Excel template. Try and get one of these out a week.